It's wrong reader, it's like the universe. I'm Ron Reader, and this is Ron Reader Digs the Universe, and tonight, Requiem for Affirmative Action. One must understand when discussing this topic that affirmative action has always been about considering race only when evaluating candidates who are otherwise more or, more or less equally qualified. Affirmative action has never been about quotas. It's never been about accepting unqualified people. It's never been the way that race-paranoid white conservatives have described it. Affirmative action is good stuff. Nonetheless, the Supreme Court, in a decision ignoring decades of legal precedent, has declared the practice illegal for college admissions. Students for Fair Admissions, Inc. versus President and Fellows of Harvard College has effectively made any consideration of race in college admissions a violation of the Constitution. I say effectively because there are some weird and confusing exceptions the court has allowed. Uh, for instance, if an essay is required, an applicant is allowed to write about how race has affected his or her life such that race is considered as an individual experience rather than as race. And it's like, what the fuck? What, what does this even mean? You know, how will white applicants approach this? And how do you consider race without considering race? Even more baffling is the exception for military academies. Apparently, diversity is much more important among military officers than it is among citizens. And how do they figure that? It's the same fucking argument for the military as it is for civilians. But somehow it's a good argument with the former and a bad argument with the latter. Just a conceptual disaster. The whole thing is to fucked up. Clarence Thomas, for instance, is known to hate affirmative action for deeply personal reasons, but, you know, he doesn't recuse himself for shit, and shit is what he offered in his concurring opinion described by dissenting Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson as igniting too many straw men to list or fully extinguish. Indeed. The majority decision bases itself on the Reconstruction Era's 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause, an amendment was, that was specifically ratified for the express purpose of protecting black people's rights, not soothing the racial resentment of white people who don't think they should be slightly inconvenienced by black people having rights. Dissenting Justice Sonia Sotomayor observes that the court subverts the constitutional guarantee of equal protection by further entrenching racial equality in education. This shit's not equal at all. The Federalist Society's echo chamber of bullshit asserts that declaring racial harmony on paper, their paper, should be taken as reality. And what it boils down to is the widespread racist belief that racism is over, so, so we should all be colorblind now. Equal protection for black and white. But being colorblind in a racist society just means the continuance of racism. I mean, MLK's vision of people being judged by the content of their character is exactly that a vision for the future, not a prescription for the now. Chief Justice John Roberts criticizes Harvard for lacking a meaningful endpoint for its affirmative action policy. You know, racism's over now, why you gotta keep privileging black people. I'll give you a meaningful endpoint. When white conservatives no longer feel victimized, by affirmative action, that will show that society has adequately changed. Until then, this country's just too racist. I'm Ron Reeder, 
And this has been Ron Reader Digs the Universe. Join me, Ron Reader, again next week for another episode of Ron Reader Digs the Universe.